What trait do you most resent your parents for passing on to you? Part 2 A poor relationship with food. Finish your plate, they said. There are starving children in Africa, they said. Now I eat when I'm supposed to, as opposed to eating for satiation. It disassociated hunger from eating and turned into bad eating habits. Oh gosh, same. And at every family gathering, they would complain that I didn't have enough food on my plate and load it up with ungodly amounts, then snap at me until I ate enough that they thought was acceptable. And then they wanted to always make snide comments about my weight and how I should start exercising more. It's your fault that I'm fat! I have had weight problems all my life because of that stuff, and I'm tired of being the fat girl. After I have this baby, I'm going to try and get myself to a healthier place. Going gray early. Started dyeing my hair now at 28, and wasn't planning on it till 40 plus. Getting a haircut requires some coordinating too now. I always thought people with long gray hair looked so majestic. We don't get gray hair in my family until well into our 80s, so I'm jelly. Horrifically hairy thighs, like a carpet remnant. My legs were super hairy when I was a kid, but it all moved north. My ass looks like a Brillo pad. Colon cancer. My father passed of colon cancer two years ago. I'm at a hereditary disposition for it. Hopefully I'll never have to experience it. My heart goes out to you. Anxiety and not being able to grow facial hair. I have anxiety and I can grow a goatee in six weeks. I'm a woman. Long nose hairs. It's not that hard to trim them. Get a beard trimmer with a nose hair attachment. Borderline personality disorder, anxiety, depression, ADHD. Not fun fact, BPD is almost exclusively attributed to women. There are those that believe that it's due to the sexism of psychologists or therapists. Only like 10 to 20% are attributed to males. My dad is a warrior. To make matters worse, he would warn us that he comes from a family of warriors and told us to expect to worry about everything in the future. Guess what? I worry about everything. Including worrying about being a warrior? Don't worry, I too have a warrior parent, but it's my mom. Diabetes. My SO was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at age 29. It's been a couple years and he's still struggling to actually accept the diagnosis. He's very healthy and works out all the time. His only vice is light beer. Nobody in his family has it. He has no idea where it came from. He's hid it from a lot of friends and especially his co-workers. He's afraid he'll be treated differently. Diabetes is not cool and not knowing how or where he inherited it has been hard for him. Terrible with handling money. Tried using your feet? I got my dad's bad teeth. Same here, but the brittle teeth came from mom. Very frustrating to be told that you are clearly doing your part to keep your teeth healthy, but they still have cavities and such simply due to genetics. Resting bitch face. People always think I'm mad. That's just how my face looks most of the time. Got it from my dad, lol. Hey, I got it from my mom. So now people think I'm mad at them even when I'm not, which if I tell them they don't believe me. And on top of that, I do the same to my friends because apparently I'm horrible at knowing when someone is actually mad or doesn't like me. Though that may be the anxiety or depression. In general, being super negative. Only recently I realized that I look at things in a such a negative way compared to peers. Misophonia. I'm a super chill person otherwise, but for the longest time I'd get super mad if anyone was eating, drinking, swallowing, breathing audibly, or making any kind of sounds. Pretty much anything short of speaking and sitting still pushed my buttons. With a lot of acknowledgement of my faults, I've slowly been able to cope and even lessen the effect. However, the biggest thing I tell myself is that it is my fault, not the people around me, and I feel calmer. Sadly, my dad won't listen to my advice on the matter and constantly blames those around him. Then when I snap at him for snapping, he plays the guilt trip card. The dude just won't seem to take responsibility. I know the feels. I work with the public and it almost becomes overwhelming to hear everyday noises. And people tend to think I'm just being a diva, but no, really. Your gum chewing makes me want to punch you in the back of your head to knock that gum out of your mouth. 
excessive sweating, back problems, heart problems, acne. Thanks, Dad. I got the sweating. It sucks so hard. On the plus side, though, I've learned, so now I have a go bag with at least one change of clothes stashed in my office, another in my car, and others basically anywhere I might need one, so I'll never be caught off guard if my pants rip or someone spills on me or something. Emotional unavailability. This can change, strangely. In my 40s, I can now feel people much better. Something just opened up like a new sense. Not sure what it was. A strong set of morals. Darn you for making me a good person. It's so inconvenient. I was raised to be honest to a fault. Guess how often that gets me anywhere at work. My hairlessness. Or rather the fact that I can't grow a beard to save my life, and it's probably not going to change. My brother is as hairy as a Wookiee, but he's the black sheep in the family. My dad can sort of grow a beard, but it's not a full proper beard. I'm not too bothered since I've grown used to my pedo stash and no one gives me comments about it anymore, but sometimes I really wish I could look like one of those old guys with a beard down to his privates, smoking a pipe and looking out over the ocean while the sun goes down. Sounds like me and my brother. I can grow a fabulous beard. He can barely get two chin pubes to grow on his face. Wouldn't be so bad if I wasn't his sister. My dad has a bad habit of saying, what? right after or during someone talking to him or asking him a question, but then he will proceed to answer. I realize I do the same thing to my SO. I've seen this a few times. I always think that the person is a slow thinker and needs some time to process. Motion sickness. Mom was always working, late nights, weekends. She'd be at home, but working. Now, I work 10 hour days plus some weekends. I hate it, and I know I wouldn't have to do so much if I didn't have such high standards for myself, but I just can't help it. I've tried to bring it down, but I end up stressing about how I haven't done enough. To never admit that I'm wrong. It took me way too long to realize it's okay to admit you're wrong and to grow from it. You can't move forward unless you can rationally think about your mistakes, or you're just a stubborn person. I had something similar. My parents always had to be right and frequently corrected people. I was in my early 20s before I realized I could just let something go without correcting it. Someone pronounces quinoa wrong? Who cares? Let your SO win an argument even though you still think you're right? Who cares? I compulsively bite my nails, skin, and pick my moles. My hands and face are often a bloody mess. I once bit a nail down on my toe really deep and exposed the flesh, which got infected. For about two years, I had a big swollen piece of flesh under my nail, which pushed the middle part up. I purposefully bought larger shoes that my toes can fit. Also, sometimes I bite my skin or nails on my fingers, and it hurts so much I can't play guitar in video games. I used to bite my nails until they bled, and what stopped me was putting that nasty-tasting oil on my hands. If you're trying to stop, that's a good way to get out of the habit. Shortness. It's been a plague upon my life every step of the way. Even though I'm good at catching, I was too short to be a wide receiver. Friends tower over me, and I've been told I'm too short to date this girl that I was head over heels with forever. I'm only like 5'7", so I'm short, but not like midget short, and still have these problems. 5'11", girl checking in. I've always liked shorter dudes, mostly because so many guys are just shorter than me. There are girls out there who don't care. Hang in there. Severe introversion. I mean, I'm fine with it really, but my life would be easier if I didn't find being quiet and alone far more enjoyable and relaxing than going out and interacting with other people. Especially when I'm unemployed, because I will go days without leaving the house and barely notice, and then I only do leave the house because I'm out of some necessity. It's hard to get anywhere the way the modern world is set up, when the vast majority of social functions feel like a chore. Though, when we're all together at my parents' house, it's kind of hilarious. My father is in the study on his computer, my sister is in her room on her computer, and my mother and I are sitting in different parts of the living room, both playing on our phones or reading. And none of us talk to each other for hours. That's hilarious, because I'm an extrovert gone introvert over the last year, after being potlucked with drug-addicted roommates my second year in college. I now go full weekends without leaving the house unless I need food or groceries. 
I never shut up when I talk to people, and I like going out, but there's just something great about being alone. What's good is that if you can enjoy being alone, then that usually means you're comfortable with yourself, something that is growing increasingly rare. Inherited my mom's thick legs and my dad's cheeks and double chin. My mom had quite a chiseled jawline and prominent cheekbones when she was young. Why couldn't I inherit that instead? Abysmally bad math ability. My dad is an engineer, but my mom got no formal education after high school, and me and all my siblings can't do math past like the seventh grade. Sad. Dude, I can't even do fourth or fifth grade math. In high school, I never finished one single math class because even the super easy classes were way too hard. I just break down and cry during lessons. Everybody around you seeming to get something your mind won't understand is embarrassing and depressing. Always had amazing grades in English, though. My mom's want to socialize and talk to new people alongside my dad's social anxiety has left me very confused to say the least. Can relate, as this was my mom, and my dad still isn't very social. As a result, my postings on social media can be very erratic. I'm sure it confuses other people, but ain't much I can do except this is who I am.